these nine most important words, certainly among the greatest of all the centuries, the word come, abide, reconcile, fast and pray, receive, love, obey, follow, and go. I shall take an hour for each point. <laughs> Jesus, our Lord, King of the universe, has offered to all men, Come unto me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. We come for salvation. This we have done. But all too often we do not come to cast our cares upon him. He is able to carry our load. I know something of Steve's heart as he is with his beloved mother. He knows how to cast his cares on the Lord. Chuck Price and his dear wife know how to cast their cares concerning their beloved Jeremy. If you've not learned how to cast your cares on the Lord, you are being robbed of your creative energy and time. He waits for you with open, loving, compassionate heart. He is the only one who can forgive our sins. He is the only one who can remove hostility. He is the only one who can deal with the issues of guilt. He is the only one who can deal with the emptiness of the heart. Only one who can give meaning and purpose to life. I read to you from Colossians, one of my favorite passages. God has liberated us out of the darkness and gloom of Satan's kingdom and brought us into the kingdom of his dear son, who bought us with our freedom with his blood and forgave us all our sins. Christ is the exact likeness of the unseen God. He, called, he existed before God made anything at all, and in fact, Christ himself is the creator who made everything in heaven and earth, the things we can see and the things we can't. The spirit world with its kings and kingdoms, its rulers and authorities, all were made by Christ for his own use and glory. He was before all else began, and it is his power that holds everything together. He is the head of all the body made up of his people. That is his church, which he began. He is the leader of all those who arise from the dead, so that he is first in everything. For God wanted all of himself to be in his son. God's great secret plan, now at last made known, is Christ himself. In him lie hidden all the mighty untapped, treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Don't let others spoil your faith and joy with their philosophies. Their wrong and shallow answers build on men's thoughts and ideas instead of on what Christ has taught. For in Christ there is all of God in a human body. So you have everything when you have Christ. You're filled with God through your union with Christ. He is the highest ruler with authority over every other power. It was he who said, Come unto me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, I'll give you rest. Is your life filled with any uncertainty, conflict? Are there personality problems? Are there conflicts between you and your spouse and children? God is waiting to help you. I've learned that we have not because we ask not. Again and again I'm faced with problems that have no human solutions. In fact, one of the most recent is when we began the building of the World Center. Leroy Eager and I, a board member living in Orlando, sought to put all this together and work out committees on our own. And he was busy and I was busy. And it seemed as though we had to have a one man, and God sent that man, Jay Berlinski. We needed large sums of money, and God sent that money. Many of them, members of history's handful, have been cultivated by members of the 
staff with Dave Hanna and many of us who are ministry heads and with various responsibilities. But we have come with all of these burdens to say, Lord, we don't have the solution. How can we find help? And God always answers. God is faithful. We can trust him. There's no burden too great, no heartache too heavy, no problems that he cannot solve. Please remember that. If these were my final words to you, cast your cares on the Lord. Come to him. Trust him. Second, abide in him. Jesus said, if you abide in me and my word abides in you, ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. What a promise. This is God speaking. God the Son, in whom dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, who possesses all wisdom, who holds the entire universe of a hundred billion galaxies and more together by the word of his command. He is saying to you and me, if you abide in me, and my word abides in you. Ask what you will and should be done to you. You say, well, I could pray for anything God will hear. No, it is only as we abide in him. And his word abides in us that we have that key that unlocks the door to all the supernatural resources of God. He wants to bless us, but he cannot bless us unless we truly abide in him. It is as we experience that truth of Galatians 2.20, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the flesh, I live with the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Many people refer to that, as I often do, as the exchange life. I am a worm, a microscopic mite. I'm nobody until I link my life up with the life of the risen Son of God and I suddenly become somebody. I'm a child of God, an heir of God, a joint heir with Christ. There's royal blood in my veins and there I can do with Paul all things through Christ who strengthens me. Learn as you live every day to let him live his life through you. We're a suit of clothes for him. It is as he walks around in our bodies and thinks with our minds and loves with our hearts and speaks with our lips and seeks and saves the law through us that we fulfill the mission to which we're called. Every day, Bonnet and I get on our knees, I've already suggested to you, just to simply acknowledge that we are a suit of clothes, a dress for him. He can do anything he wants because he is trustworthy. He is loving. He is compassionate. He is all-powerful. And as he said, the things I do shall ye do also, and greater than these shall he do because I go to my Father. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. I've claimed that promise and believed that promise all these years. And I look at what God has done to this movement and say, to him be all the glory. It is his life in me and his life in you and those who've been with us through the years. It is his life, his resurrection life, his resurrection power that works the miracles we see. And to him be all the glory and praise. If you abide in me, and my word abides in you, no need for me to elaborate in depth, but I've said it before and I say it again with double emphasis, you cannot live a godly life unless this is a daily part of your life. Reading it, studying it, meditating upon it, memorizing it. it this is of all the books ever written worth more than all the books ever written. There's no book like it. It is God's word to us. Thank you, Kay, for reminding us what we all know and believe. But you did it so beautifully and so dramatically. And I'm so glad you had the privilege with me of hearing from someone who loves not only the Son of God, 
the Word of God, but the, the living Word of God, but the written Word of God. And if you don't have a plan now to study it in depth, please make a resolution by the enabling of the Holy Spirit to begin this very day to make this more important than your breakfast, more important than your lunch, your evening meal. I like to begin the day on my knees just reading this holy word because it's more important to me than my breakfast or anything else. I don't know, I'm not always faithful to this, but I would rather have time with the Lord than my breakfast if there has to be a choice. Spending time in this holy word. Feast upon it. And then you can ask whatever God impresses upon your heart, and he will answer you. Philippians 2.13, God works in you to will and to do of his good pleasure. And it is only as you abide in him and his word abides in you that he, the Holy Spirit, can impress you. Some of you say, well, God never speaks to me. He speaks to all men. If only we abide in him and his word abides in us. I've quoted this so many times over in Psalms. We're reminded in that great passage, friendship with God is reserved for those who reverence him, who abide in him, and his word abides in them. With them alone, he shares the secrets of his promises. Dearly beloved, whatever your, your challenges, whatever your responsibilities, the mighty king of the universe who created all things is available to enable you to live the way he commands you to live and empower you the way he has promised to guide you into all truths as you continue to abide in him and his word abides in you. Reconcile. Chuck made reference a few moments ago to individuals who have left this movement because of their sin. My heart aches. I've been involved in discussions and prayer again and again with different individuals, but ultimately we have a free will. We can say yes to God and live miserable lives, uh, and live lives of victory, or we can say no to God and live lives of misery. There are no happy, disobedient Christians. There are times when we as staff may, because of our aggressiveness and oftentimes insensitivity, not be as concerned for others as we ought to be. But our Lord has a word for us. If you are offering a gift on the altar and there, remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there in front of the altar. First go and be reconciled to your brother and then come and offer your gift. We have policies in this movement which, if properly followed in the chain of command, can eliminate most of our conflicts and misunderstandings. What I say is not always what you hear, and what you say is not always what I hear. It's a part of the human equation. It's the part of the old sin nature, husbands and wives, who even though godly sometimes don't fully live on the same wavelength. But we are admonished when there is any conflict to deal with that conflict. We have standards of performance. We have job descriptions. And sometimes there is a perception, and I personally, knowing both the one who is grieved and the one who is perceived to cause the grief, believe that oftentimes, in most cases, it's a matter of misunderstanding. I know the people involved on both sides, and I know their hearts. I know they love Christ. But I would admonish you, please, beloved brothers and sisters, if you have responsibilities, if you are a servant leader in any chain, of, in the chain of command, and in fact, all of us are in some measure, never, never violate our Lord's command. If you have ought against your brother, your brother has ought against you. Get reconciled. Humble yourselves before our great holy God and ask forgiveness. In the marriage relationship, someone has said there are 12 words that can always guarantee a happy marriage. 